Yeah.
singing a song about God is so good. And the preacher opened his eyes and he looked and he said there were three people in the whole church praising the Lord and all three were in wheelchairs. Oh my God. Listen to it now. Listen to it. Hallelujah. Man. That preacher began to weep and he said his eyes focused on one man who could barely talk and he kind of mimicked how he talked, not to make fun, but just to show how hard it was for this man to get a word out. And he said he watched that man unbuckle the seatbelt in his wheelchair. And he thought, what is he doing? And this group is still singing a song about how good God is. Yeah. He scoots out to the edge of his chair. He gets on the floor and he crawls like a soldier would on the ground to the front of the altar. Come on now. And that preacher said, I gotta go up here. Cause for a man to put forth that much effort, yeah. I gotta hear what yeah. he's got yeah. to say. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna know what he said, church? Yeah. He got up there and he said, God, you have been so good my God. to me. My God, my God. Yeah. Yeah. A man come out of the wheelchair whose arms he said was curled up yeah. to say, God, you have been so good to me. Yes. Yes. And listen, take this however you want to take it. Yeah. I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm not griping. Right. But I hate to tell you, I look at this congregation. I'm going to make it personal. Come on. Come on. I look at y'all and there might be one or two yeah. lifting your hands. Yes. But God has been good to you. Yeah. Thank you. 
quite understand. But I encourage her never quench the spirit because of what you think people might think. Because it was when someone spoke in tongues in front of me, I got hungry. I said, what is that? When I saw at Center Point, Full Gospel Church of Bologna, when I saw Sister Deb going down the aisle praising the Lord, I said, I've never seen that. Right. When I saw people weeping and laying hands on people, I was like, I've never seen that. Yeah. What is this, God? Then I began to search out the Lord. Yeah. Then I began seeking for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Then it just was time for me to have a reflection. Let me tell you, church, you see little Gracie, you see Ethan, you see little T, they're not going to know nothing but church, but sitting in a church pew and listening to a man.
The land, and sure it was a good land, flowing with milk and honey. But because they heard wrong and saw wrong, they didn't inhabit. And they didn't, they didn't take the land that God had already given them. Man, ain't that a wonderful concept? If God makes you a promise, it's your promise. It's yours. But you still gotta, you still gotta go to bat. You still gotta, you still gotta show up for the battle. And, it, it, and, and they did. So, 40 years has passed. Numbers chapter 33, verse number 50. And the Lord spake to Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Now they've still not possessed any land. They still not crossed Jordan yet. They're just getting close now. They've been surfing. There's one place in their, in their journeys that the Spirit of God by the cloud led them. And all through those places, there's one place in particular that they come around three times in Kadesh Barna. They looked at it. They said, we've been here before. But after a while, we're going to come out of a circle and go straight and receive what God's got for us. But the Lord spake to Moses, verse 50, the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you are passed over Jordan in the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all the pictures and destroy all the molded images and quite pluck down all their high places. And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein. For I have given you the land to possess it. This is God speaking through Moses. God said, I have given you the land to possess it. Yes, sir. And ye shall divide the land by lot and by an inheritance among your families. And to the more you shall give the more inheritance. And to the fewer you shall give the less inheritance. Every man's inheritance 
shall be in the place where his lot falleth according to the tribes of your fathers ye shall inherit. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which, look at it now, ye are you let remain of them, shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and ye shall vex, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you. This is the Lord speaking through Moses, as I thought to do unto them. Now in Romans chapter number 8, what a blessed, blessed scripture. Romans chapter 8, verse number 35, the question is who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or, or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That's what they say. And I think they said that about the church, the, the, the New Testament believers. But Paul writes, nay. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Would you say that with me? More than conquerors through Christ. Your Bible says Him, but it's Christ that loved us. And this is Paul's very persuaded. He said, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why don't somebody shout amen to that? Let's pray. Father, we give you praise and glory and honor now. Help me pray here, church. Father, for with the Spirit of the Lord, the Word of God, and we just ask you right now, Lord, that, oh, God, that you just clear our hearts and our minds tonight. Let us be receivers of these blessed promises, Father, we pray now. Bind everything that's not like you, Lord, as we pray, loose the power and the plan of God in the lives of your people here, Father. Again, we're careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray, can the church shout amen one more time in this place. We have two or three. We was on, you was on board. You give the Lord. Always give the Lord a hand clap. I promise you, I don't think the hand clap's for me, okay? It's everything we do is for Him. Okay? We stay here in Him. We glorify Him. We worship Him. Amen. That's why we call the body of believers. What a blessed promise. We're more than conquerors. And we, we, we're going to get there in, in, in just a moment. But tonight I want to preach a thought simply entitled The Inhabitants. The Inhabitants. You and I, let me say it like this. We were born to possess. We weren't born to be possessed. We were born to possess the glory of God. To, to, to inhabit the presence of the Lord. Because God inhabits the praises of His people, right? Yes, sir. Now, now think about that. God inhabits the praises of His people. Means to he, 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 he brings that near to it. He gets glory from the praise of His people. But here we read that, that Moses is warning them now and telling them what they need to do. Now, honestly, that they would pick up, have to pick up a spear and a sword. We know a giant picked the spear and the sword up one time and, and, and David defeated him with a, with a sling and a stone. God had every, other methods uh, in, the, in his arsenal to drive out the inhabitants that's been squatters on that property this morning. Like I said, he would use hornets. He would use anything, amen, that, that, that he chose to use to, to, to in aid uh, and enable his people to go forward. Uh, that's the whole concept of Ephesians, I think, chapter 6 of the, of the spiritual armor. Uh, there is no armor on the backside because God's plan for his people is to go forward. Uh, and friend, I want to tell you, forward is a, is a good direction. Uh, you gain ground when you go forward. Uh, hallelujah. You, you, you bring yourself in a place that 
you can see now a little further down the road when you go forward. Uh, because it's the plan of God for the church, amen, uh, all the way from this, this exodus here, all the way, amen, for the, for the people of God to hear the instruction. Uh, Caleb and Joshua were more than convinced that they could take the land. Uh, and, it, and they come to a place uh, that God said, okay, you're going to sit down, you're not going to do it, you're going to perish for it. But, but Caleb and his generation, this is what the Bible said, because he's got another spirit, meaning not the spirit uh, of, de of defeat, uh, not the spirit of I can't, uh, not the negative aspect of anything. No, Caleb was a believer. Uh, and 40 years later, uh, I said 40 years later now, when they come to the promised land, uh, if you remember, Caleb said, now give me this mountain, Joshua. Uh, Joshua's in charge of this of, of, of this place and put the people in the right places of the to be the new inhabitants. Uh, and Caleb now, 85 years old, uh, he looks at Brother Joshua and he said, I'm, I'm as able today uh, as I was 40 years ago uh, that I can receive the benefits and the blessings of the Lord. Uh, some of you acting like I'm talking in a different language here. I'm telling you, you're going to have to change your mindset. Uh, you're going to become the possessors of the properties of God. I'm not talking so much about real estate now. The Old Testament is a type and a shadow of everything for the new. Here, it was real estate. It was Canaan's land. It was a property that God would divide the 12 tribes, amen, in, in the parts that he believed and thought and saw that they could inhabit. But we find out in the New Testament now, we fight a battle by a different force and by a different nature, don't we? Amen. By the Spirit of the Lord, glory to God. Uh, now, amen. Uh, we begin to look. And I will, like I said, I've got, I want to get through a few things right here. And then we're going to move on into the precepts and the concepts of the Lord uh, and what God's got for His people. Uh, so we understand, amen. Heaven suffers violent. Like I said this morning, the violent take it by force. Uh, you, if, listen. If you're not willing to stand up against that adversary and, and begin to plead the blood of Jesus and put that enemy where he belongs, uh, under your feet, you're going to continually stay defeated by it. You're going to be overran by him, uh, and eventually you'll be overcome by him. Uh, but that's why I love what the Apostle Paul said, Nay, uh, but we're more than conquerors through Christ, friend. Uh, we cannot do this thing by ourselves uh, we, because we don't fight the battles by intellect or physical power. We fight the enemy. We fight the forces of hell by the Spirit of the Lord. The old saints of God you to plead. They, they knew how to plead the blood of Jesus. Put those devils to flight, friend. So listen now. By allowing these inhabitants to remain, not only do, they, do we bring God's judgment upon ourselves, but we also bring all the miseries of the uncommitment that we display to God. Uh, man, I want to tell you, I've said this for years, and I know it to be true. The most miserable people in the world is a person that's got religion with no relationship with God. Yes, sir. There was an old boy that come to church up there in Jonesboro. He was a, he was a, he was a son of, a, of an elderly lady, a godly lady, and that boy was godly growing up, man. He preached, and uh, and he, he quoted scriptures. Well, he had fell away for years, so he started coming back, and, and uh, he, he, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't like one church service would go by that he wouldn't run me down to quote me about ten scriptures. And one day the Lord said, I want you to tell him now that's enough. And God finished telling me what to tell him. And he, he come up there, he come quote them scriptures. He, he, he got that judgmental spirit about him now. He's pointing over there and pointing over here and pointing everywhere and quoting them scriptures. And the Holy Ghost rose up in me and I turned around and called him by name. And I said, that's enough. I said, because you can quote them all day long, but until you start living them, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't get no help now. Until you start living what you quote them, Quoting them don't do us no good. We, we must demonstrate to a lost and dead world that Christ is not dead. Thank God he's alive forevermore. We wouldn't be where we would right now tonight if he wouldn't have died. But he took our sins upon him and he laid himself down on the, on the tree of Calvary. No, friend, to become that propitiation, meaning that this sin atonement that you and I Man, 
man, listen. Listen to what he said. This is the Lord speaking. Speak to the children of Israel. When you pass over the land, you inherit the land. Drive out. He said, by force, you've got to drive out the inhabitants of that land. Now, I, uh, the inhabitants simply means here at this place to sit down as judge. It means to dwell, but this one right here means to remain. It ain't nothing. Them, them Canaanites, Pezzarites, and all the rest of them, ain't none of them are going to leave. Huh? On their own accord. Israel's not going to go across that across that Jordan and, 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 and ask them nicely to leave. Nobody's leaving. They've been there a long time. In fact, their mindset believes that, that that's their property. So they're not going to go anywhere. So they couldn't go pleading. They couldn't go begging. They had to go with a force. And the, and, the, and the force, watch this now. Caleb knew it. Joshua knew it. Way back then, now, the force was not in their own physical strength. The force was the, the belief that God had already said this. Uh, the force comes down to this. Faith, friend. Uh, faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Uh, but with faith now, Caleb and Joshua said, uh, we can possess this land. Let's go, let's go possess it. Uh, it's a promise that God has told us. He gives us. Uh, God ain't a truce breaker. Uh, God's not an Indian giver. Uh, God's word is, is, is thorough. It's true. It's for the ages to come. It never goes old. It never gets out of date. It's going to always be the same. And he said, you can, you can possess the land by dispossessing the inhabitants of the land. To dispossess now means to occupy. It means to drive out previous tenants and possess it in their place. Think about that, to drive out the previous tenants and then possess them in their place. Anybody got rent houses? Anybody own rent houses in here? Well, say Brother Ronnie, he rents his place out. A year goes by. The, the occupant just meets him at the door. He's coming to get his rent now. And, 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 and the occupant just kind of comes out closes the door. Huh? And... Gets the rent. So the owner now hadn't seen the inside of that house for a year. I'm just talking about standard general rent house, okay? But all of a sudden that, that person moves out. Now the owner goes to that rent house. And it might not be just speak and span. The owner goes and he looks and he sees holes in the wall that wasn't there. Blood or whatever all over the floor or something. You see, because I do know that nobody takes care of your stuff like you do. Come on now. Man, I want to tell you. Hey, brother, get out, get out, get out, get out. Come on now. And then three counters right there usually means disaster. Huh? Come on. But anyway, all of a sudden, it's a year gone by. Now he goes now. He's ready. He's got people ready to move in. But guess what? Now all of a sudden, the house ain't ready to be moved in. Come on. Because there's a lot of junk in there that's got to be cast forth. Glory to God. Now we are the house of God. And there has been, there's been an, oh, an, a habitation from, a, from a, a deity that wasn't holy lived in us as we were born. But all of a sudden, we get born again. My God. And the Spirit of the Lord comes, uh, but through a thorough investigation, uh, a walk around the property, amen, uh, in here he sees that there's a lot of stuff that's got to go now, uh, because it's not worth the value, uh, amen, it has been decreased in value, uh, because it's not up to its full potential, uh, can I tell you, church goers don't get to heaven, uh, you got to be born again Christian, that's who goes to heaven, uh, That's what God said. It's just a parallel. I'm going to get to Romans. It's just a parallel. you got to drive out those inhabitants. Yeah, you do. 
and you got to dispossess the, the, the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein, for I have given you the land. And uh, come on now, you got to you, listen. You got to drive it out. You got to you got to uh, dispossess it. Uh, you got to you mean you got? Uh, yes, you do. You got to drive out them previous tenants. Uh, oh glory! I'm fixing. I'm fixing. We fixing to go on over to the Book of Romans here in a minute. But listen, by allowing the inhabitants to remain, what are you talking about? When I come to Christ now. Now we know God's people is going to have to go there by force and remove them. But God told them it's theirs. And if they would do it the way God said it, God's going to give them victory to do it, right? Yeah. It's the same way today. Nothing's changed. I mean, people want to just take the Old Testament and throw it away. It's historical, friend. It points to the new. It points to Christ. It's such a good history lesson there. We see the effects of not doing it God's way. It don't work. Listen, it will. It will bring misery. Of uncommitment. It'll bring it'll bring shame. It'll bring apostasy. Amen. It eventually will bring a, a whole denial of Christ. We can say one thing, but yet there's such a, such other stuff that comes out that it just brings it, it it brings a denial of the power and the plan of God. Let me tell you that old song, God's not dead, for he is alive, friend. I want to tell you that he, he's not going to die. He's not going to go back to Calvary again. He's on the right hand of the Father making intercession tonight. Uh, but he's given you and I power. Now think about this. Uh, now in that Old Testament, uh, the Spirit of God was not, was not per se inhabited of, of, of God's people, but the power of God would fall on a person. Uh, but even Samson, Samson become a strong man when the Spirit of God was set down on him. Uh, but Samson would not. Not, uh, he would not dispossess the inhabitants. Uh, he had to play with it, toy with it, and he made sport of it. He thought it was fun. Uh, he thought he could control the environment. Uh, he would tell her just enough, but he wouldn't tell her all. But he kept playing around and playing around and playing around, and all of a sudden, uh, it come out. Uh, and when it come out, amen, uh, his strength is gone now. He rises up and he finds out he's in prison. He's in bondage now. All through the word of God with those that after God put their finger. Huh, listen, David, King David, huh, woke up and saw Bathsheba. Huh, then God sent the prophet over there, told him, you're the man. Huh, amen. Why is it? Huh, why is it that most of the time people won't repent until people get caught? How many preachers at that point? I mean, was truly sorrowful. Were they sorry because they sinned before God, or was they sorry because they got caught? Oh, wow. I'm no judge. I never judged them. I'm not throwing a stone at nobody. But I'm here to tell you, friend, a lot of times, a lot of times we got some things, some little inhabitants there. Man, did you, that felt, you know what that fellowship was fixing to fall down? Because it's had termites for a long time. We've sprayed, <laughs> done this, done that, but it's just, it's, 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 it's termite eating. Amen. They're not big. They got a they, they termite ain't six foot tall by about four foot wide. My God, a rhinoceros couldn't take him. I'll tell you, that'd be a bad ombre. But I'm going to say that little, but to destroy the whole, a whole piece of, of, of property, a whole building can come tumbling down by something that small. But watch this. It ain't just one. One termite can't tear it up. But that army of termites, they get together. It's like a, it's like a red, or like an ant. Them ants ain't fighting each other unless you throw them on another bed. Amen. But as long as they all come into the feed from one bed, you see them back and forth, back and forth. And the amazing thing about an ant, they can how much, how many more times their weight can they carry? It's a bunch. I thought I saw one carry the Oldsmobile the other day. I'm telling you, man, I went, and oh, I was, I've been bush hogging lately again, and just, just the, the grass is high, and hit them big piles, winds blowing, they've been blowing them babies down my neck, and I want to tell you, I got the weedy jeebies here, you know, I'll eat up, I scratch all the time now, but it takes my mind off of where I'm supposed to, in fact, I was playing, I'm scratching and looking for ants, I'm way, way past where I'm supposed to be going, it'll make you, it'll make you miss your mark. But because, man, because, friend, listen, we get so, we get so perplexed with the things around us. It steals our peace. It steals our understanding. All of a sudden now, we find ourselves resorting back to what used to live there, trying to knock it and get back in. It's doubt. It's fear. It's calamity. It's anger. It's malice. Come on. It's love. 
lust, it's murder. It's all trying to come back and you've been born again. But thank be to God, we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We're more than more. I wonder if anybody would just shout more. 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 Man, that's like I am around a table with a good meal. More. <laughs> Amen. I want to tell you, friend, if not careful, we lapse right back into that junk. We lapse. Now, all of a sudden, we were doing so good. Woo, boy, when Brother Stephen Mullins was here, that baby was high for it. Everybody come to hear the evangelist. We had revival, man. All of a sudden. And all of a sudden, it started getting back to the norm. Ain't nothing to kill a church quicker than the norm. Because we all know the norm was not up here. The norm was just usually. Well, here I am again. And with that kind of concept, you didn't come for nothing. You've got to have faith, friend. Yeah. I come to church. I'm preaching tonight. Believe that God's going to give me something. I'm going to yeah. leave you more with more, more of desire, or more, amen, more of, of an understanding of the, of the Word of God. Because, listen, everybody around them said, they, well, they, they, they killed all the day long. They like sheep going to the slaughter. But Paul says, no, no. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through Christ. Through Christ, friend, that loved us. Where would we be without the love of God? We'd all be on our way to hell right now, friend. But thank be to God that we got we got hope here tonight. Now, now think about this. He got God told him and told Moses to tell him, "You shall divide the land." Okay, and but listen. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you. Then it shall come to pass that those things, and this, and this is it right here, which you let remain. Man, that's liberating right there. I thank God somebody else can't keep me in bondage. Those things that you let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes. You know what the word pricks means there in the Hebrew? It means briars. Now, I've never run headlong in a briar patch and got a briar stuck in my eye. I've got my bald head scratched up a lot of times, but I've put my head down. But can you imagine getting briars in your eyes? Huh? Th 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 think about this now. Oh, friend, the things that you let remain, they're going to become pricks in your eyes and thorns in your side and shall vex you in the land wherein you dwell. Now think about this. I love this. Okay, you still might be able to defeat and run the Canaanite out of his, out of his hole. You, might, you still might be able to take a strong city. But when you get there, you're not totally free and you don't desire to be totally free. God's just going to raise up another enemy to come dispossess you. Right. Come on. Right. Young people, listen to me. This is good medicine for, for us older guys too. But them cell phones, I want to tell you, not only are they dangerous when you drive and looking at that trying to drive down the road, but it is so easy to find you something to look at that you ain't got no business looking at. And some of you sitting right here might be guilty of it. And you know, why would, I, why would you say that? I'm not accusing nobody. But do you know, friend, when we can't celebrate Jesus and love Jesus and the liberty that Jesus gives us, if we've got no interest in loving each other, loving the Lord, and being a, a body of Christ and some, I want to tell you, there's something on these things that, that gets our attention. Yeah. Yes, sir. It, I hope and pray it ain't porn. Come on. I hope you ain't trying to learn to be the best bomb maker. That you can go blow something off. <laughs> but something... I watch a lot of YouTube because I like how to's. But just because some not yet has got a video on YouTube on how to, I watch his video, man. I said, man, hey, you don't know as much as I know about this thing. <laughs> you just getting you you trying to get a bunch of likes on there, you know? Come on, somebody. But what I'm saying is dangerous. Yes, Guys, this is dangerous. Them, them, them iPads and, and the, the home PCs and, and all them. My Lord, the devil has made these things. The devil has made so many obstacles for the body of Christ to, 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 to get over now. 
uh, things back when we were growing up, it was harder. Yeah. Not that you couldn't sin, but you just had to drive somewhere to get what you was looking for. Now it all comes right to your house. I wish somebody yeah, listened to me right now. Yeah, In cities, they got DoorDash. They got all these other places. You, you order, they'll bring it to you. No questions asked. Think about it. Come on in, brother. Think about it. No questions asked. And what it is, guys, what it is, is those inhabitants is trying to come back. You see, when we, when we, got, when we come into Christ, we got free. Who the Son makes free is free indeed, right? So we're free. But what do you think? All the things, all that junk, all the inhabitants of this world that was in there, the Lord begins to, to move them out. And listen, you can't physically reach in there and get nothing out. But if you'll give God the permission, He'll, he'll drive them out. Come on, somebody. He'll, he'll like he planned a building in the cabinet. You get them all, you get them moved now, they're going to get upset because they've been there. Some of, them, some of us, they've been there a long time. Yeah. And they got some good attachments now. They got roots. They have t shirts. I like my t shirt rooted in root. Got them roots everywhere. But let me tell you, there's an antichrist there also that's got roots. Go deep. And I want to tell you, but thank God He's given us the ability through Him. Not in our own self, but through Him. So now, remember, here's the property, here's the land. God said, he, uh, let me read this one more time. I, because I'm telling you, this is life changing for somebody. Listen, but, but this is what God is telling us. But if you will not drive out those inhabitants, them old things that's within you. Now remember, you can't do it in yourself. But God's already given them the power to do it. God's on their side. Amen. And they ain't even got the Holy Ghost. Come on now. But God's on their side. But he says, you've got to do something, guys. He said, if you don't drive out the inhabitants of the land before you, then it shall come to pass that those things which you let remain shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your side, and you shall it shall vex you in the land wherein you dwell. Amen. And then if you continue to hold on to them, God says this then. He says, well, moreover, it shall come to pass that I'll do unto you that I thought to do unto them. Mm -hmm. Think about it. So we're more than conquerors now. We're more than conquerors now. Think about it. Conquer simply means, the word conquerors here simply means in, in, in Romans to gain a decisive victory. Mm. That means just a good old tail thrashing. We, we, we wasn't that great in basketball, but we finally found a team weaker than us. Oh, we want to pour it on them. Come on now. You know, you've heard of running up the scores and stuff. I guess because every other uh, school in our boys' parish always run the scores up on us. We, we finally won one year fifth ward. We, uh, fifth ward in Pocheville. We were, we were a little, just a little bit more talented there. Oh, yeah, the coach, uh, the coach is going to start pull, putting the second and third string in. So, hang on a minute now. We, we've lost seven straight. Now, it's about time that we get some encouragement. Come on now. A decisive victory. Now, all of a sudden, the score is 60 to 21. Now, it's a decisive victory. And that's the way God does with you and I in our times of war, in our times of need. If we have plant our feet on the solid rock of Christ, he's won the decisive victory. You don't have to go to heaven by the skin of your teeth. You can go to heaven shot glory because God has given you a decisive victory. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Somebody said, well, that don't sound like y'all are good sports. What are you trying to be? I'm trying to win a game. Oh, don't look at me like that. I didn't say we were sanctified. <laughs> Amen. But listen here. We're more than conquerors. Think about, dear God, how much grace and, and power does it give us right here? More than conquerors. Amen. Man, we could shout all night if he just said we're conquerors in him. That's shouting ground right there. But to be more than conquerors? That, do you know what he's trying to tell the church tonight? Uh, that there's not one weapon formed against us shall prosper. Uh, there's nothing that the enemy can, he can't steal, kill, or destroy anything because we got more than conquerors. We got the abundant life for Christ. Man. Yeah, I come to give you life, Jesus said, and give it to you. More abundant 
area, but you got to show up. You got to you got to believe. You got to stand in the times of testing. You can't continue to fall down and run off. You got to stand and believe the word of the Lord. You need to get impregnated by the power and the plan of God. Yes, sir. If you'll do that, if you'll do that. When these inhabitants try to come back, you know, you go eat somewhere, you sit there at the restaurant, and all of a sudden your favorite tunes come on. Yeah. It ain't Amazing Grace. You remember. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I think that's what Fred Stare used to do, huh? Oh, I know, this is corner for some of you, but you're the very ones I'm talking to tonight. Yeah. Oh. oh, yes, sir. You sitting in that line somewhere and all of a sudden that old thing used to float your boat. <laughs> oh man, it make all of a sudden, you know, come on now. All of a sudden your mind goes way back there for the last time. You can remember. Oh, right now, your favorite worldly song out there, don't act like you ain't got one. Huh? Hallelujah. I'm going to come on, somebody. Everybody start praising and believing and shout God. Oh, but I'm going to tell you, listen. Huh? Oh, I said that favorite old tune comes. Huh? If it's country or rock or God forbid, rap or, or something of the nature there. Huh? I, 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 I was reading something the other night, and, and there was one group, they, they said there was blues rock. I said, what was blues rock? I don't know. I guess it was blues music like rock and roll. I don't know. But I know one thing. That didn't say gospel. That said blues rock. Come on. And they got this and they got that. And, they got, and we all come out of something. Now, some of you ain't been honest all night, but would you please be honest and say, that's right, I come from something beside gospel when I was young. Or some of you answer. It's like pulling chicken teeth. Hey, that's all right. That's all right. I'm not ashamed of this gospel. I'm very ashamed of what I used to be. But I refuse not to try to use it to help somebody to give them some hope. Oh, he ain't. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, come on now. He drank his, his self blind to alcohol. He popped on his pills while he was drinking. Is he proud of it? No. I should have been dead. 25 times. I ended up in places I didn't know how I got there. Come on, I took things I don't remember taking. Oh, I know some of you too sanctified for this, and I wish I had that kind of testimony, but I don't. I come from the other side, the dark side. God had to go look in the dark and shine his light. Them old inhabitants. That was a Jesus knock. <coughs> because he didn't bust the door down. But them old inhabitants, they'll just kick it down. Violent man. Steal. They'll try to kill. They'll try to destroy. And they ain't going to play with you. They're going to come in and take back. What they believe is rightfully theirs. Because really, they had ownership. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, they had ownership on us. They had first deals. We were all born into sin. Yes. Yeah. Well, I still hope some of you to at least just maybe a uh, chicken pit every once in a while <laughs> to acknowledge that y'all telling you the truth. Y'all act like you ain't got <laughs> I think I could go to Israel tonight and preach them Old Testament Jews and get more response. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm telling you the truth. Brittany. You see, we belong to another when we were born. And all the way through until we received Christ as our Savior, we belong to another. We'll come to church a few times and feel a little religion. We'll feel spiritual. But until we make the step and, and totally dispossess the whole plan of the enemy to allow God's plan to reign over us and in us. Wash us in his precious blood. You gotta be washed in his blood. You got to you got now the power of Christ living in you. You got 
the, you've got the power to say no to them old enemies. Come on. Because we're more than conquerors. The Spirit of the Lord has given us victory. Man, I'm here to tell you sometimes that don't impress the devil none. That devil, that devil ain't intimidated because you got God in you. Think about it. The Spirit of the Holy Ghost led Jesus in the wilderness and fasted 40 days. Well, guess who's sitting right there following him around for a while? So do you think your our little religion, our, our little coming to church, or our little maybe hand clap, and I'll be glad when that hand heals. I wanted to clap hard so bad tonight. But do you think the devil really is intimidated by that? He's only intimidated by one thing. The blood of Christ has washed us pure. Amen. Huh? And if you don't stay clean, if you don't allow God total access, listen to this, total access. I tell you, I tell you, let's, let's do this tonight. Let's go home and lock our doors except one. Let's lock our windows, but let's leave one raised up. And you lay there and sleep. Maybe back when we were. Yeah. Daddy turned that attic fan on. Yeah. Think about it. That attic fan right there. He's got air conditioning in their room, but it ain't no air conditioning in our room. <laughs> we got the gas furnace now, the heater in our closet, but no vent for the heat. But Daddy would turn that 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 attic fan, oh, we raised the windows and the curtain, you would have think the whole house was demon possessed with the curtains. <laughs> I mean, we're trying to sleep and the curtains are slapping you upside the head. <laughs> and I was doing pretty good until one night. Mm. Two girls slipped up to our window. Because I had to share with my little brother. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. And he made me sleep by the window. I wanted him to sleep by the window. But as I was asleep, they slapped and screamed. When that screamed, and I shot up out of that bed, and I screamed, <laughs> glory to God. And I think that was the last time I ever slept in the window. <laughs> Where's all that courage I didn't have Jesus. <laughs> huh? Think about it now, guys. Think about this. Yeah. If we're not desiring to be full of the Lord daily, you don't have the full armor on. You don't have the full protection. You covered this, this, and that, but you left that wide open. Well, where do you think he's coming in? To the most vulnerable place. Oh, yes. Yes. Woo, man. Come on. Open window. <laughs> See, an open window is good. He'll pour you out a blessing. Yes, he will. But an open window will allow the thief to call in, too. Yeah. Right. You know what? He, you can't, can, I, can I talk about the open window mentality just for a minute tonight? Yes, sir. Lord God, I, I'm going to have church if i got like control of right. If i got to have it all by myself. Huh? You know. You don't, you don't preach your bad ways. You don't found you a church, amen, that preaches the liberty of the Lord. You don't come, glory to God, too far to turn back now. You stood up and testified and said, I put that devil under my feet. You've done all the things that church folks do. But all of a sudden, the buddies show up. The boys show up. Come on. Huh? With, their, with their radio cranked up loud, glory to God. Huh? I would have said that just to invite you. Just come on over here for a while. Huh? What you should have done huh? and say, no, huh? I'm done with that life, but we didn't. Huh? We got drew into it huh? because the sound, the smell, and everything that goes around it reminded us of the inhabitant that used to be there. Huh? And if not careful, it just draws us right back. Huh? But can I tell you, in the midst of the getting drawn like a magnet to a piece of lead, it all were to tell you God will put his hand between the magnet and the, and the ball bearing and stop the force of You know what happens when we let them old inhabitants come in? 
We, we, we can't be happy because other people around us is happy because if it happens, it's still gone. Man, that's a destructive spirit out there. Somebody asked Brother Clint Denham years ago, Woo, how long have you been saved? He said, well, working it out day by day. But he said, I get saved every time somebody else does. He said, I speak in tongues every time somebody gets full of the Holy Ghost. That's to incorporate unity. Man, I, I'm, I'm well pleased when people get victory. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Man, I want to tell you, but you better watch yourself because there's not going to be a day that won't go by that them, and old, them old inhabitants is going to try to move back in. Yeah. <laughs> but thank God we're more than conquerors. Yeah. To gain a decisive victory. Right. A decisive victory. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, this is what I'm talking about tonight. We once were blind. Yeah. But now we see. We were bound, but now we're free. Now you can only see and you can only be free if those old inhabitants is gone. Are they gonna still they gonna still crawl around your territory? They're gonna still look for ways to come in. They're looking for an entry point. But friend, can I tell you if they do if they do find their way in, but if you're full of God, they're illegal. They're illegal and they can't stay. Because we can proclaim in the name of Jesus. You you torment in spirit. You can't. Oh, let me tell you the big one in the church today is that carnality spirit. Amen. Uh, you carnal demon. You 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 got to flee because I, I am a possessor of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ is a possessor of me. Come on. Uh, I want to tell you the tormenting things. Uh, oh, friend, I can't, I can't wait to next Sunday to, to get into the, to the uh, spirit of fear study. Uh, that we can find out exactly the symptoms of having a spirit of fear. Uh, but thank be to God, there's not one of those symptoms that God's not the answer. Come on. Uh, I would, there is a remedy. I want to tell you, he's still the remedy. He's still the plan. He's still the word. He's still the Lord. He's still the Savior. He's still the I just don't feel all that preacher. I do. Because I was bound. You've all, we all got testimony. If you're free tonight, you got a testimony. I'm not proud of what I used to be. And people that, that would think I'm boasting on the old, you're, that's foolishness. But I'll never get so high-minded that I won't share a part of what God's brought me from to bring me to. And I don't care what hair lips I will have. Again, I'm not, I'm not proud of all the junk I've done. It brought me such shame in my young Christian life until God taught me that's all in the past now. It's under the blood. Don't be looking back at it to the Savior if you want to go back to it. But we've all got our past. Amen. But he lets our past help somebody in the present to give them victory in their future. Yes, sir. And whatever that, whatever God might have brought you out of. And guys, aren't you glad he's the God of second chances? Yes. And third chances? Amen. He loves us. He talked off the heart to them on their numbers, but he was trying to drive a point. He said, I've given you this. Think about it. When the God of heaven tells you he's already given you something, and you're too rebellious to reach your hand out there and take it, possess the land. He tried to make them understand if, if he would have had all them inhabitants that was squat on that property gone for 40 years, the place would have been so grown up they would have never grew crops. But think about it. The enemy done all the hard labor. And God said, now go possess the land that belongs to you. But the question is tonight, 
Do you have enough faith and enough courage to possess that land? Do you have enough faith and that enough courage to acknowledge that he, God is our Savior? Quit looking back. Quit looking back and still lusting or desiring things back there. There's nothing in my past that I want to go back to. But we look forward and ahead. And we want to bring as many as we can on the journey. But do you know what I, I sense on, 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 on some of you? Can I just be honest? I'm not going to call you by name. I'm not going to embarrass you. But I sense such a spirit of condemnation on some of you. You have a preacher. You don't know what all I've done. But God does. And if you put it under the blood, God says you're forgiven. And the hardest person to forgive is yourself. But if you would just get past that obstacle, you can possess the promises of God. Because He's made us more than conquerors. Says, Brother John, just play softly tonight. I want to ask you. This is a self-evaluation. I can't answer your question. Are you, are you possessing the property that God has given you? Peace, joy, love, and the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about 50 acres somewhere, but I mean, God will give you blessings like that too. But God wants you to have the spiritual power to walk forward in, the, in His plan that He's got for every one of us. How many believes that God didn't make a misfit? God didn't make a mistake. God didn't make somebody that just could never come to the plan of God. No, sir. It was God's will for every person to be saved. He uses the word man there. But every person to be saved, that's God's plan. But somewhere in our journey, we're going to have to man up, or I guess you would say woman up, to, to possess it, to, to, take the, to take it and say, okay, God, the promise I got, I possess this promise, God. It's confirmed by the word of God, and I feel you by your spirit. And you say, Lord, that now your word says that we can possess it. That's why we must have faith. Yes. So I ask everyone tonight to evaluate that right there. Because before long, friend, before long, the drawing, the touch, the visitation by God, it might not be as, as strong and evident. Because I find that there's timelines. It's called seasons. And while the, the getting is available, we need to get in. Let go and let God tonight as we pray. Find an altar. Spend some time with the Lord tonight.